Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, February 11th, and it's snowing again here in southeastern Pennsylvania. That's okay, it's February, it's supposed to snow. Not too terrible. Uh, probably going to get a couple more inches. I just had to go out and move the wife's car because you got to have enough room to get the snowblower through. Uh, when you're coming down the driveway between the grass and the car, and she somehow, well, had to move her car in the snow. It was fun. But that's done. Uh, now we just wait for the snow to stop, hopefully, and uh, we'll go out and run the snow blower. It, it shouldn't be that bad because I've got the path cut in from the last storm, and uh, I doubt very much we're going to get 14 inches, so we should be fine. Enjoying some uh, some of this GLP's Barbary Coast, and I'll talk more about this momentarily. And Larry Black at Tamper, look at that American Eagle, beautiful, beautiful. So I'm back. I I, I took some vacation time. Um, crazy, I know. All I did was I missed one live stream, but. It was nice, you know, it was, uh, it wasn't nice to miss the live stream, I missed that Friday night, but it was nice to unplug for a couple of days, and, you know, unplug, what the kids call it. Uh, barely checked email, watched a few videos, I think on Saturday morning, maybe, uh, maybe it was Friday morning, I can't remember, because I took off Thursday and Friday, and so I had Thursday through, through today off. Wife and I went for a couple of rides, and it was nice. It was it was quite nice. Uh, we went down to Green Lane uh, Reservoir, uh, which is a big, well, it's a big reservoir, um, but there's like a big park around it, and uh, you know, walked a little bit by the lake. The lake is quite, uh, it's frozen. It's not frozen enough that you could walk on it or anything, but it's it's frozen, and uh, yeah, it was kind of neat. Did some cooking, made some uh, mahi-mahi last night, it's very good, I like fish. Watched some movies, um, watched a really good movie, I'll, maybe I'll talk about this a bit more, uh, from a bit more informed point of view at some point, but there's a movie on Netflix called The Dig, just The Dig, and it was about this uh, excavation in England just prior to World War II of a an Anglo-Saxon burial ship, and it was just a really interesting story because it was the woman who owned the property and was like, a, I believe, an amateur archaeologist, well, which it's a bit more complicated. Her husband died in, I presume, World War I. Uh, she hired a gentleman to excavate where she believed the ship was. He found it. And then the, uh, the big shots move in and take over. Uh, it's just sort of the story of, of, of that happening. But at the same time, there's all these different sort of dramatic things going on, you know, love interests and things like that. It was it was a very good movie. So if you get a chance, watch The Dig. I couldn't tell you who was in it or anything else. I just remember the title. You're lucky I remember that. Speaking of Larry Blaggett, uh, I sometimes feel like I'm doing advertisements for Larry. I'm not. I just love his stuff. And this one really isn't necessarily everyone's cup of tea, but I got this the other day. Larry made a, you can see there it's IGPC, so Instagram Pipe Community Medallion. And these things are, you know, solid pewter, quite heavy. They come with a little plastic stand so you can prop it up. And what's cool about this is a lot of guys on Instagram, myself included, 
will take pictures of the pipe they're about to smoke, their tobacco, their lighter, their tamper, you know, just this little cluster of objects and you take a photo. And it's nice to have something in there that provides some visual interest. And boy, that, that's a great thing to put in there. Uh, and it's nice to keep on my desk. It's got some really neat artwork on the back. Um, our buddy, Eric the Blue Collar Pipe Smoker's brother, Tom, I think that's right, is a designer, graphic artist of sorts, and he designed the, the artwork on it. Really nice. It's got a... There's an old time radio in the middle, and there's, a, there's a, a pipe with some smoke curling up around the the, the, the radio. There's a little check tool somewhere down there. Uh, just just really nice, uh, sort of nostalgic pipe type art. And then there's a quote running around it. Uh, <laughs> this is going to be tough for me because seeing when your eyesight starts to go. Seeing silver on silver is really hard. Uh, let's see. Of all the hearts that close with mine entwine, none lie so near nor seem so dear as this old pipe of mine. That quote, you probably recognize it, is from uh, Elton Buckley. Elton J. Buckley, uh, This Old Pipe of Mine was the title of a poem. It's in that compendium of pipe smoking poems or the pipe smokers poetry thing. Uh, you know the book I'm talking about. I'll put a link down below for the book. Um, so yeah, it's a poem by, by Elton J. Buckley, a much longer poem. Nice poem. Uh, and I thought, you know, let me just see if I can find anything out about Elton J. Buckley before this video. I spent about 10 or 15 minutes. Ah, Apparently the only thing Elton J. Buckley ever did was write that poem, so I'm sure the man had a very full and active life. I, it's just not recorded on the internet, so therefore he didn't exist, right? So, if you're interested, um, you know, get in touch with Larry Blackett, buttons for your britches on Instagram. Uh, if you're not an Instagram guy, I don't know if he's even going to consider a YouTube version because Larry's not on YouTube. And apparently this was a heck of a lot of work to get done. Not easy to make something like this, but I understand. But it's nice to hold in your hand and play with it, too. If I could do that, I can't do it anymore. Silver dollar roll thing. Ah, to be a kid again. So... Barbary Coast GLPs. Um, I'm impressed. Not what I expected based on the description. So let me let me light again and I'll read you the description. I threw this in with a recent order of Haunted Bookshop. Uh, just to try something different. Finest cube cut barley, chosen for its deep nutty flavors, forms a robust foundation for this sophisticated blend. Yeah, I, I, I get, I, I agree with that. Rich red Virginia tobaccos are added for their subtle sweetness and complexity, while the unique spice of pre provides added dimension. That's definitely true. There are times when this blend almost, almost appears to be a vapor. Uh, the burley comes in and out. Burley and the, and the Virginia kind of trade off and on as you're smoking it. Very interesting. A delicate kiss of brandy polishes the blend to perfect finish. Barbary Coast is delightfully satisfying with hints of black walnut, dark chocolate, and dried fruits. The perfect all-day smoke. So I was interested in this because I don't mind a, a, a slight alcohol topping uh, as long as it's really you know, brandy and not some brandy flavoring. And yeah, you know, I opened this up. I smelled it, as you do, and uh, I thought I was opening a McClellan product. It had that that barbecue sauce vinegar smell to it, and uh, maybe it still does. 
yeah it's it, it's very much a barbecue sauce smell so that surprised me uh, so it must have a lot more virginia in there than we thought and well the preak is adding something to that because the preak has got that plummy raisiny kind of figgy smell that's kind of forming the base of that sweeter vinegary barbecue sauce uh, smells like a vapor smells like a mcclellan vapor uh smokes like a vapor i don't get any of that nasty tart mcclellan vinegary sharpness from it so that's a good thing and the burly you know i was hoping since it was the first thing that they talked about on the label i was hoping this would be more burly forward it's not it, it's the burly's there and like i said it comes in and out but it's not i wouldn't call this a burly blend i would call this a virginia blend with burly The Perique is perfect. You know, it's 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 providing a lot of flavor. It's nice and spicy on the retro ale. And the kiss of rum, or whatever he called it. Um, I don't smell it in the, on, on the tin note, and I don't taste it. I, I get no topping on this at all. Now that might just be my old burned out palate, but. I'm a little bit torn on this one. You know, I, I, I never had a bad smoke from GLPs, and this is no exception. It's, a, it's an excellent smoke. It just doesn't seem to match what they say on the tin to the extent where I almost feel like I might have gotten the wrong tobacco. I, I know I didn't. You have to wonder sometimes if the guys that write the uh, tin blurbs ever smoke the tobacco. I get no cocoa, I get no black walnut. But it's a nice, deeply sweet uh, vapor blend with a lot of body, a lot of smoke. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I, I I'd recommend it. I just wouldn't recommend it if it's what if what you read on the tin is what you want because it's it's very different. Anyway, enough of that. Excuse me while I get a pipe there. Get a little bit of gurgle. Oh, by the way, this is a Bari pipe. I don't think I said that earlier. So, in addition to taking some time off, this weekend was the weekend I had to get all my tax information together for the for the pipe company. Uh, it's always fun. Truth is, I'm not much of a bookkeeper. I do keep everything, but I just keep it in a big folder and then. You know, every time I put something into that folder, I say to myself, huh, this weekend I'm going to go through that and start to organize it for taxes. You know, and after saying that 52 times, you suddenly have to actually do it. And uh, it wasn't too bad. And it finally got done. It's what happened last time and what is almost certainly going to happen this time is I made just enough money for the government to penalize me for making I'm fortunate in that not fortunate is the right word but the majority of what I make I put back in and you know some of the things I can claim some of them I can't like if I buy a piece of equipment I can. and this year I bought that uh, Fordham hanging up and the uh, the filter unit behind me for, for working with acrylics and you know those were fairly large expenses 
not thousands of dollars, but but hundreds of dollars each. And uh, you know, other things I can I can claim like uh, files and you know, the purchase of acrylic stock and and gel uh, and things like that. Uh, but I gotta keep track of it. Right? So that helps offset the penalty a bit. But uh, yeah. Last year I was really surprised. Last year, last year, the year before, I actually lost money. You know, the, the net on the balance sheet at the end of the year was a positive, but the impact on taxes was a That's complicated. I'm actually quite good with math. I, I always get mad at people when they say, oh, I can't do math. You can do math. You just don't want to. But when it comes to accounting, I just find it so boring. Just really, really don't enjoy it. I'm that way with a lot of things like HR stuff at work. I can I can read the dense scientific article, and you know, really, I can spend like a half an hour on one paragraph trying to unpack it, trying to understand it, and all that. Uh, you, you give me an HR document, you got to read this new policy on whatever. I can't do it. I, it just, I just have this mental block about it. And I guess the accountants out there are saying the same thing that I said about math, and the HR people are saying the same thing that I said about math. You can do it, you just don't want to. You're probably right. I really don't want to. Well, folks, other than snow removal, I gotta gotta tie up the tax stuff today and do a few more things. And I think I'm cooking dinner, so won't be a busy day for me. Back to work tomorrow. Try to make a video on Wednesday. We'll see how things go. I will be back on Friday night with Virtual Pipe Club. I haven't made a bumper yet for that, so just you know what it, what it is. At 8 p.m. Eastern. Um, Oh, by the way, a big thanks to Chris, the Rambling Dilettante, for filling in for me last Friday. I, I really appreciate that. I haven't watched the show. Um, like I said, I've been kind of unplugged, but I'm sure Chris did a fantastic job, and I hope you guys showed up and, and supported him and continue to support him. Subscribe to the Rambling Dilettante's channel. He's, he's a good guy. You'll enjoy his content. All right, folks, <clears throat> I think I'm going to go ahead and get on with my Sunday and let you do the same. You all take care. Have a fantastic week ahead. And until we speak again, I'll look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Bye now.